Even when it doesn't make sense, wide body flights always make sense. Hi there, my name is Kevin and I make honest, unsponsored, and to the point narrated trip reports about flights and hotels all over the world. This is episode number 107 and today we're taking an Air Europa 787 from Barcelona to Madrid. Hope you'll enjoy the flight. Welcome to a beautiful spring morning in Barcelona. The route between Barcelona and Madrid has for many years been the busiest route within Europe, but due to the increased popularity of the high-speed rail options on the route, now doesn't even come close to the top of any list when you're looking at it globally. If you'd like to know the exact fare that I paid, my next five videos in queue, or info about all the gear that I use on a daily basis, check out the description below. Air Europa, a member of the SkyTeam Alliance since 2007, is a relatively small hybrid carrier with its largest hub in Madrid. The airline has a surprisingly small presence in Barcelona with just a handful of desks tucked away in the back corner. In the past few years, it's been involved in yet-to-be-resolved acquisition talks with British Airways parent company IAG, which would frankly be insane if it's improved since IAG already owns the largest and second largest airlines in Spain. Iberia, and Welling, respectively. Something that wouldn't be all that insane, though, would be if you'd give this video a big thumbs up if you enjoy it, or if you don't enjoy it but can't deny that at least 12 seconds of it were useful for your next trip. Subscribing, clicking that notification bell, and checking out my new Patreon below are also very much appreciated. A big thank you in advance. As we explore a bit and look around for some coffee, just a bit more about that possible buyout. In 2019, IAG agreed to buy Air Europa, Spain's third largest airline, with 34 aircraft in its fleet for a cool 1 billion euros. COVID in 2020 came, and the deal was reduced to 500 million euros. Then the deal just fell apart altogether at the end of 2021. But as of now, it does seem as if IAG is still in some way pursuing the purchase. While we wait for the flight, let's head up to the Pau Casals Lounge, which is available for Priority Pass members on Shagan area itineraries. Note that the food, only the clips of the food that you'll see here, are from my most recent visit to the lounge in August of 2022, just to give you a better idea of what's currently on offer. For a third-party contract lounge, this has to be one of the best in Europe. It's large, has loads of different seating options, is well-kept, and has quite a bit of food on offer. If it had better apron views, I'd most likely try to move in. Alright, let's talk about this flight a bit more. At the time of my flight, and at the time of posting, this is the shortest, and I believe the only, daily, intra-European 787 flight operating. That I could find at least. Ethiopian does fly between Oslo and Stockholm, but they use a mix of 787s and 777s. Air Europa uses these flights, which seem to be running pretty full as feeder flights for its plethora of long-haul routes from Madrid. According to FlightsFrom.com, my favorite website to waste time and procrastinate on, they currently have 16 routes to South America, 5 to Central America, and 2 to the US, some of these with multiple daily frequencies. Waiting for boarding to begin, I sacrificed my place in line to catch an SQ A350. So, while I did enjoy the flight, let me explain why I'd absolutely never do it again. The train is just too freaking easy. When all is said and done, the train is frequently cheaper and faster than flying, and certainly more comfortable and generally the way that I would travel between Barcelona and Madrid. But last I checked, the train doesn't have a spool up, and Air Europa was a new airline to check off my list. So, there's that. Boarding soon began, and while they did call out boarding groups, every single one of those announcements fell on deaf ears, and we ended up with this. While we wait, let's take a quick look at today's stats. We'd be taking off just 9 minutes late and making a quick climb up to 29,000 feet for this 300 mile ride to Madrid, where we'd land 30 minutes early, but after a 20 minute taxi and a bus ride after that, it was a wash. Boarding was through an all-glass jet bridge. I wish it was a law or something that these had to be glass and had to be clean. We entered our 4-year-old 787-9, which would continue onto Punta Cana after this leg. 
While I was hoping for an upgrade offer, the business class cabin was in fact full on this leg, and while I am keen to try out any new seat type, these certainly did leave a bit to be desired. These are the seats where one flatbed is hovering over the other, requiring acrobatics to get out of the window seat. My standard economy seat was well padded and comfortable. It did seem to be a bit tighter than the advertised 31 inches of pitch though. While there were comfortable headrests, there was unfortunately no individual air vents, but I was pleasantly surprised to have the entire row to myself. The safety video was screened on the personal IFE screens, and we began to push back. A short taxi today would bring us to the runway, passing multiple other wide bodies along the way. We'd be taking off to the southwest before making a few turns over the Mediterranean to get us on our track to the center of the country. The spool up and takeoff is next. On this short flight today, there were no movies available, just the moving map, which was fine with me. And there was absolutely no service at all. The bathrooms were standard configuration for a 787, though this one has seen some better days. Nothing like a bit of duct tape to glue the plane back together. Between the beautiful day, the colorful scenery, and the picture-perfect clouds, there was quite the show happening out of my window. After 16 minutes at cruising altitude, we began our descent and our approach brought us in from the southeast. This really had to be one of the longer taxis that I've had in quite a while. Saying this airport is massive is an understatement. I was, however, very happy about what happened next though. Regardless of all the extra faff involved with flying versus taking the train, deplaning via stairs did kinda make it all worth it. We would retrace our taxiing route and head back to the domestic arrivals area before waiting for quite a while for our bags.
as we get into the flip-flop score, what are we thinking? Overall, if it wasn't a 787 flight, I would have never taken it. That being said, I don't think I could ever say that I regret a $45 wide-body flight. Everything else was as standard as it gets. Perhaps you might be flying Air Europa long haul soon and this will give you a good preview of what to expect on one of their 18 787s. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe for three new videos each week. I'll see you next time at the Rio Plaza España.